Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to our service here at Shiloh Baptist Church of Landover, where the Reverend B. Lewis Collinson is our pastor. We are honored that you decided to worship with us today. May the words we hear from the sermon draw us closer to our Savior and give strength and counsel for the days ahead. Today, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper after the pastor's message. So be sure to join in that service with us as we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To learn more about us, visit our website at shilohbc.org. Now, stay tuned for more information from our virtual worship leader. Good morning. I am Lawanda, your virtual worship leader. Welcome to our second Sunday worship service. Join me and other officers in the live chat to let us know where you're worshiping from. Welcome back to all our members, guests, and friends. Take a moment to share our worship service on all your social media platforms. Also, join us on our social media platforms at Silo Landover. The Bible tells us to rejoice always, pray consistently, and give thanks in all circumstances. Here at Shiloh, our officers are available to accept your prayer requests each and every Sunday during the service. Add your email address into the live chat on the right side of the screen and an officer will contact you. The live chat is only available during the streaming hours of 10 a.m. We invite you to support our ministries here at Shiloh. Malachi 3.10 tells us to bring all the tithes to the storehouse so there will be enough food in the temple and he will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have enough room to store. If you would like to support our ministries here at Shiloh, here is how you can give. Visit our website, at shilohbc.org forward slash give. Send a text to the number on the screen. Mail your gifts to the address on the screen or stop by the church to drop off your love offering. Join us now as we will have a song selection from the music ministry, prayer, scripture reading, and a musical selection.
Our God and our Father, we come thanking you for this day. We thank you for every blessing that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for bringing us through this pandemic. We're not through it, Lord, but you've been with us each and every step of the way. So we give you thanks for everything. Lord, we come asking that you will just bless these United States. Bless this country, bless our leaders, because we need good leaders. God provides what we need. He said he would never leave us or forsake us. And even at this time, we know that he is still with us. He leads us, he guides us and protects us. But we first have to believe in him. And we believe in him, all things are possible because we cannot do anything without our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name, give you the praise. Amen. I will be re reading for your hearing and listening the King James Version, Psalms 96, beginning with verse 1. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nation are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Given to the Lord all ye kindness of the people. Given to the Lord glory and strength. Given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. I have read, read for your hearing and listening, Psalm 96, verses 1 through 10. Amen.
Are you ready to hear the word from God from our pastor? Join us as we listen to Pastor Collison. Good morning, good morning, Shiloh. Good morning. God bless you on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. We are so grateful to all that God is doing and all that he has already done. I want to invite your attention to this very familiar text that's found in Daniel, the third chapter. Very familiar text, but it is a text I believe that God has given to me to share with you because of its importance of where we are right now. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you now. We bless you, we honor you, and we ask now that you would, you would, our Father, speak to me, your humble servant, speak through me and speak for me, that the people of God might hear directly from heaven. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, Daniel, the third chapter, beginning at verse 13, let us look now on the Word of God. Let us look at it from the King James Version, if you would, uh, with me, please. Daniel, the third chapter, and we want to begin reading at verse 13. I will read a few of the verses and skip down through verse 30. Again, Daniel, the third chapter, beginning at verse 13, King James. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar speck and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready that at that time and at what time ye hear the sound of the uh, cornet, flute, harp, uh, set breath, psalmstry, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning uh, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Verse 22, therefore, because the king's uh, commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that brought 
up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fury furnace. 25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. My brothers, my sisters, and verse 29, therefore I make a decree, Nebuchadnezzar is talking now, that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amidst against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to talk with you uh, out of this text, again, very familiar text to you and to me, but a fresh word. I want to talk with you from this message. You have been tried and proven by the fire. You have been tried and proven by the fire. Let me say that one more time. You have been tried and proven by the fire. My first point today, my brother, my sister, is surviving the king's gods and his golden image. We have just been brought through, and I say we have just been brought through because I know from my personal walk that I didn't bring myself through 2020. I was brought through, and the only one who could have brought me through, uh, even as Shanezza, uh, uh the king says, uh, no other God could have done this but my God, but your God, uh, he brought us through 2020. Listen, surviving the king's gods and his golden image. We've seen a whole lot of the king's gods to, in 2020. We have seen his gold, his golden images set up in different locations, but praise be unto God, surviving, surviving, and you have survived, I have survived. Listen, to survive the king's gods and his golden image, you must first know who you are and whose you are who you are, I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king of kings. No earthly king, but my heavenly king. And I belong to the king of kings, Lord of Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Never, then Nebuchadnezzar, in verse 13, in his rage and fury, commanded. Now, you, you know the story how um, in um, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, own desire to be honored and to be worshipped, he built a statue that was 90 feet tall, 90 feet tall, 
and his breast, his, his width was nine feet wide. And when the music would begin to play, everyone, regardless of your, your race, regardless of your language, regardless of what nation you um, hail from, you were to drop down and worship and worship this golden uh, image, this golden image. And so here, um, when you read around verse uh, 8, uh, you find that the, uh, 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 the, uh, those who did not care for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they came to the king and said, you know those guys, those, those Hebrews that you have uh, taken a liking to, and you have even given them uh, authority in your kingdom, well, they don't worship your gods. And when the music starts, they don't fall down and worship your 90 feet tall and nine feet wide golden image. And the word says that in verse 13, in his rage, in his fury, he had uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego brought before him. And you, you hear it in the text how he asked the question, is it true that you have not fallen down and worship my gods and my golden image? And my brothers and my sisters, in order to have made it through 2020, you would have to have known who you are and whose you are. And most of us, most of us who are Christians, perhaps we called on God more than we have ever called on his name in our lifetime. And I know that it has not affected everyone, but I'm one. It has affected my brothers and sisters because I wanted God to bring me through 2020. And I believe somebody out there, you wanted God to do the same for you. And praise be unto God, he has brought you through. But I want you to know we have been tried and proven by the fire. And listen now, and listen. When the king wanted everyone to bow to his gods and to his golden image, we have to realize, even as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego realize that I don't belong to man. I don't belong to these gods and I don't belong to a golden image. I don't care how much money you have, you cannot buy me, I'm not for sale. And I wish others understood that as well. When these three Hebrew boys were brought before the king, they let it be known that no, they did not worship his gods, nor would they bow down to his golden image. Now, my brothers and sisters, as the word says, it rains on the good and the bad, the just and the unjust. I believe that there are some who made it through 2020 and you did not bow down to the golden image and you did not worship other gods, but I also believe that there are some who did bow down to the golden image and worship other gods out of fear. Out of fear. But when you know that you know that God sits on his throne and Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Brothers and sisters, you cannot sell the Lord out. You cannot turn your back on God because of the cruelty that's in this society. 
You cannot sell this, you cannot sell your soul, you cannot sell what doesn't belong to you. And while so many would say, well, I did what I thought I had to do. My brother and my sister, I'm not here to debate with you about that. I'm just saying that if you belong to God and Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you should never turn your back on the Lord. And look at this now. The three Hebrew boys are before uh, the king, and the king asks, uh, have you not worshiped our, uh, my gods and not bow down to my uh, golden image? And they said no. I like what Jesus says in Matthew 10 and 19, in the King James, he says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the Hebrew boys, these boys, um, they may not have known exactly what all they were going to say, but God showed up in them and God spoke through them to this king. Which brings me to the second point. Knowing that your God is able makes a difference. You see, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like many of us, we, 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 we have experienced God uh, before we got to this uh, 2020. Uh, before we got to 2020, God had brought us through uh, some other fire, uh, some other furnaces, some other trials and tribulations, so we knew that God was able just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you would, look at verse 17 with me. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And if he will deliver us out of thy hands, O king, now, here is what you have to hear, that these three Hebrew boys are saying to the king, listen, the God we serve, he is able to deliver us out of your powerful hands because he is more powerful than you are. And if you cast us into the fiery furnace, he is able to deliver us out of the fiery furnace. My brothers and sisters, this is because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had experienced God delivering them before, and you and I, we have experienced God delivering us before a 2020 showed up, and God showed up in 2020 but I want you to hear how assured Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was about God's abilities is in verse 17. But listen to verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Amen, amen, hallelujah. What is it that they are saying? They are saying that we know that God is able to deliver us out of your hands, from your hands, from your evil, we know that God is able to do these things, but if God choose not to do it, we are still not going to worship you, your gods nor your image. Why? Because we belong to the King of kings and Lord of lords, the I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega. And in verse 19, we find that King Nebuchadnezzar's attitude changed drastically against the three Hebrew boys and his fury reigned and he 
then ordered them to be cast into the fiery furnace. Verse 20, and he commanded the, the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning uh, fiery furnace. Now listen at this. Then these men were bound. Listen now. We miss verse 21 too often. Listen. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosing, and their hats, and other garments, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. Listen, don't miss 21, because see, 21 makes no sense in the natural right now. But sometimes God is setting us up to see his mighty hand, his mighty power as time moves on. In other words, they were not stripped down. They, 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 they were uh, bound in their hats, in their coats, in their uh, trousers. They were bound up in all of their clothes. My Lord, why would they be bound in this way? Therefore, 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, Matter of fact, it was turned up seven times harder than normal. The flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, let me, before I go to 23, let me, let me point something out to you. And I hope that you saw what I saw in 2020 that those who thought that they could deliver up God's people and cast God's people into their pits, into their hell, into their fiery furnace. The word says that these soldiers who brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the fiery furnace, they were consumed. They lost out. And the word says in verse 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound. Watch the picture now. Don't, don't lose focus on the picture. They are fully closed. They are bound up, and they were bound by strong men. Therefore, they could not get loose on their own. Watch this. Fell down, bound into uh, the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. My Lord, some of you have been in the pits itself. Some of us have seen the fire. Some of us have seen others destroyed in 2020. Some of us have been in the hospital. Some of us had even thought we could not make it out of the hospital out through this pandemic, neither pandemic, the racism pandemic, nor this coronavirus pandemic. But yet, you can hear me, you can see me. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. They are bound up, all their clothes on, with a hat on, and now they're in the midst of a fiery furnace that's turned up seven times harder. 2020 was harder than any year uh, than, that, that I have ever experienced in my life. We have never seen this in our lifetime. It was turned up. Oh, brother, it was turned up. Oh, sister, it was turned up. Not a few people died, but thousands hundreds of thousands have died 
have been tested positive, have been treated. Some were just simply sent home and treated. And you don't have a shout for the Lord. You don't have a hallelujah for the Lord. I'm here to tell you, I, if you don't have, just stand back and listen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. God has been good to us. He brought us out of this fiery furnace. Let me move now to point three. Did you see the Son of God walking with you in 2020. That's enough to shout about right there, my brothers and sisters. Did you see, did you experience God walking, the Son of God walking with you? In your fears, in your anxiety, did you feel the presence of the Lord with you? When you got that phone call, uh, when your loved one was sick, did you feel, did you experience the love of God, the presence of God, the Son of God walking with you? Did anyone ask you how did you make it through? Because you really were in the fire. They couldn't even see you coming out. But you made it out. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 24, then <clears throat> Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste. Now, remember, his soldiers are dead because the fire consumed them. The last they saw of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were down in the midst of a furnace of a fire that's turned up seven times hot. Now the king, he gets up, listen, and speck and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king, Look at verse 25. Again, I ask the question, did you see the Son of God walking with you in 2020? Verse 25, he answered and said, Lo, <laughs> I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Hallelujah. Did you see the son of God walking with you in 2020? Honey, if you didn't see, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you nothing but the honest truth. I not only saw him walking with me, but I experienced him on every hand walking with me. In my conversations, I heard him. In my prayers, I saw him. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I pray that you too have seen, have experienced the Son of the living God walking with you in 2020. Matter of fact, I believe that's the only reason you made it out. I believe that's the only reason I have made it out. Why? Because the Lord was walking with us. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and speck and said, now Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high God. You see here, he sent the men to be destroyed because uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, sent the men with the idea that he had the bigger God. But listen at what he says. He says, ye servants of the most high God, 
somebody out here, somebody in your home have walked through the fire to the point that somebody have said who didn't believe on the Lord have said, you serve, you really do serve. God is really with you. You serve God and he is with you. Then, Sh uh, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Watch this. I said to you a long time ago that, that, that when God wants to show you off, God will invite your enemies to your party. And God will be the host. And God will set you up. Listen, listen. Verse 27. And the, the prince the governors, the captains, the king's counselor, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. You remember I told you back when the strong men, the strong soldiers were binding them up? They still had their hat on. They still had their coats on. They had their hosens on. They, had, they were fully clothed, bound up. But listen at the report now. Listen at the report. You see, God does what he, he does to prove that he is God all by himself. And I believe that 2020 has been a time for you and I to get to know God like we have never known him before. Hallelujah. Praise be unto the Lord. Being gathered together, these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor smell on fire had passed on them. Hallelujah. God sent them into the fire with their clothes on so that the testimony would be that not even one singe of their hair was uh, singe or the hair weren't singed and the smell of smoke, the smell of fire was not even on their clothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, can, can you imagine just a few moments with me now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're in this fiery place. It's hot as hell in there. Oh, it's turned up seven times harder than usual. And they went in with the belief that God is able to deliver them. And here they are in the midst of the fire. And the king's testimony is that I see four men walking around loose. Can't you imagine in your sanctified, in your holy mind, in your spiritual mind, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is saying to the Lord, we knew you were able. We just didn't know if you were going to show up and take us to heaven or to bring us back before the king. But we knew you were able. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. You've been brought out of the hospital. You didn't think you were going to make it. And you can say, I knew God was able to bring me out. But God, I, in the midst of the fire, I did not know if you're going to bring me out. But I thank you for bringing me out, bringing me through, that the people of God might see that you still, you still have the power to deliver out of the fiery furnace. Listen now. Then Shabnazar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, can't you shout right now, my brothers and my sisters? Can't you shout because not only did God uh, 
come into the fiery furnace and, 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 and save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But watch this. God now has converted a king uh, from his God to believe on the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I believe that you, my brother, you, my sister, you have caused somebody in 2020 to believe on the God you serve because of what God has brought you out of and brought you through. I believe that somebody trusts in the Lord now more than they have ever. I believe that somebody called on God's name because of what God has done for you and you and you and me. I believe that God has used uh, 2020 to bring somebody to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brothers, my sisters, uh, the king, not only was he converted to believe on the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but in 29, uh, he declared, therefore, I make a decree that every uh, people, nation, and language which speak anything amidst against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses uh, shall be made a dunghill uh, because there is no other God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? There is no other God that can deliver Liver after this sort, there is no other God. I don't know who you serve, but the God I serve, I declare, he delivered me through 2020. And I believe, Christians, that he delivered you through 2020. And therefore, verse 30, and uh, then the king promoted. You see, what the astrologers, uh, what they thought was going to be a, a doom day for Shadrach and uh, Bendigo turned in to a day of conversion and a promotion uh, by the king. Hallelujah. Somebody, you thought it was all over for you and God brought you through and you thought and your enemies might have thought that you were going to be demoted you were going to die, but God says uh, that he has death and life in his hand and no one can pluck you out uh, and God uh, has allowed you to live and you ought to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And not only will he uh, let you live, God has promoted you in the heavenly realms and even on your place, in your place of work. My brothers and my sisters, I just want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that you have been tried and proven by the fire. And I know that the fire is still blazing. I know that the fire is still going on. But I want you to walk in 2021 with the knowledge that God has brought you through 2020. And if you know that God has brought you through all of that, you should also know that Jesus is still walking with you and he'll bring you through 2021. Uh, I like uh, <clears throat> Burke's song, Solomon Burke um, song, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim's journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Uh, uh, in my trial, Lord, walk with me. Yes, I want the Lord to walk with me. I pray that you want the Lord to continue to walk with you. In my sorrow, Lord, walk with me. When my heart is aching, aching, Lord, walk with me. My brothers and my sisters, you have, we have, been tried and proven through the fire, in the fire, with the fire. Don't lose what God has blessed you with, and that is another year 
to worship him, to bless his holy name. Don't lose it. Hold on to it and share it. And even as you go through your 21 days of praying and fasting, I pray that you would ask the Lord to continue to bring you through, to strengthen you, and to help you to be an encouragement for somebody else. God bless you and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much right now in the precious name of Jesus for your holy word. We thank you, God, for bringing us through the fire. Thank you, God, that no matter how hard it got, you brought us through and we say thank you, God. And you, you, you brought us through, God, and, and we don't smell like fire. Our clothes don't smell like fire. We don't look like we've been through the fire furnace. Our hair has not been singed. God, we say thank you. And Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for that brother, that sister, who do not know you in the pardon of their sins, that brother, that sister who backslid, but now, God, they have an opportunity to come to know you in fullness once again. My brother, my sister, if you want Jesus in your life, repeat after me. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess him as my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. My brother, my sisters, if you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are saved right now. And I pray that you will join this church. And if you can't get to this church, join a church where the pastor and leaders are teaching the Word of God. God bless you. God, thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for bringing through still those in convalescent homes and those, God, in nursing homes, rehabilitation centers. Thank you, God, for continuing to bless our scientists, our doctors, our first responders, we pray, God, that you, our Father, would intervene in this country like you have never intervened before. And we thank you, God. We thank you for what you've already done. And we ask now in the name of Jesus that you'll continue to bless us, to bring us through. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you, my brother, my sisters. Thank you so very much for joining us on this Sunday. And I pray, I pray that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have been tried and proven in the fire. God has brought you through and God is keeping you in his mighty hand. God bless you. I love you. And I pray God's blessings upon each and every one of you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for being almighty God. As we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper, we thank you for the bread which represents your body that was broken, though not in a physical sense. And then, Lord, we thank you for the cup which represents your blood that was shed for the remission of sin. We thank you, Father, for making the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf. We exalt you, we magnify you, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we have come now to the Lord's Supper. And I pray that you will have either one of the elements from the church or you have substituted it for crackers or bread and rather it be water or juice. And you have come to remember the Lord. Remember what the uniqueness of the Lord's Supper is really about. And that is 
the bringing together of all believers. The Lord's Supper, it communes. We are communing with each other. And so I say to you now, this communing with one another, it brings about the community of believers. And as we prepare ourselves to know that the Lord, he did this for you and he did it for me. On that evening, Jesus sitting there with his disciples, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. But broken not in the way that we see it physically, but broken in relationship. For he had left the right side of the Father to come to be with you and me and the world. And then to die, suffer, and die, be buried for three days and raised for on that fourth day. And 50 days later, he ascended to heaven and went to be with his father. And in like manner, he took the cup, he blessed it and said to his disciples then and say to us today, this is my blood which is shared for the remission of sins for many. Drink, drink ye all. And so, my brother, my sister, as we have come now to partake of the Lord's Supper, let us do it and in like manner. Let us take the bread and do as our Lord and Savior commanded us to do. Take, eat. The bread represents his holy body. And as he commands us to take the fruit of the vine, which represents his precious blood, which was shared for the remission of sins for many. Drink, drink ye all. Now they sung a hymn and went out into the Garden of Olives. Wherever you go, whoever you talk to, please remind them of the goodness of the Lord, and he is worthy to be praised. Bless it be the name of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, for that powerful word that you shared with us this morning. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to be reminded of the scriptures from today's message. Remember to give to support our ministries here at Shiloh. Luke 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. In good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Please view our four giving options on your screen. Don't forget to join us each night for our 20-night revival at 7 p.m. right here on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you have been blessed by the Word of God from Pastor Collington. The Word teaches us how to live a holy life before God and man. So read God's word daily, saints, and live by it so you can be a witness before God, your family, and your friends. Shiloh, please join us in the 20-night revival service through January 19th. The revival will include a third night of youth revival that is solely dedicated to our youth. Plan on joining us online each night for a soul-stirring word from God. And remember to continue to fast and pray from 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. through January 19th. 
when we make sacrifices for the Lord, he will hear us and honor our prayer requests. Until we meet again, we pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and your family and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.